This right here is how I've been playing my Nintendo Switch recently and I thought it was worth sharing. It's just a mount that I made for an all button controller so that I can use my Nintendo Switch, sort of like a laptop or I guess a clamshell. All things considered, this was relatively easy to do, but that's because I sort of iterated on it over a long period of time. The controller here is a Snackbox Micro. It's a relatively popular leverless fight stick or all button style controller. I sometimes call it a fight pad. It's specifically made for fighting games. I use it for Mario games. We'll, we'll get into that. It's not a very cheap controller. I love it specifically for how low profile it is. It's a great portable option. When I'm playing in handheld mode, I frequently miss my leverless controller. So this is a great way for me to take this with me. This stretches all the way back to my second video on the Lenovo Legion Go, which is a PC handle. And I felt very similarly about that. I wanted to play some games with this leverless controller. I think what helped me connect the dots there was that the Lenovo Legion Go is very similar to a laptop without the keyboard attached to the bottom. So would it be cool if the keyboard bit was a controller? So I built this rudimentary stand for the Lenovo Legion Go, form fitted it to slide right in and instantly connect. When it's not in use, I can lay it face down here for storage. I would have really loved for this to be foldable, but making hinges is hard, especially hinges that are strong enough to hold a whole tablet. Fast forward to right now, I've finally broken out my Nintendo Switch again because I've been addicted to Nintendo World Championship. I use all button controllers all the time when I'm playing at my desk, but I'm so addicted that sometimes I need to play it away from my desk. So I started using that contraption that I used for the Lenovo Legion Go, and it works for the Switch, but it could be better. So I got to work modifying it. I am not an engineer. I still use Tinkercad because it's an extremely simple 3D software, but you can get pretty complex with it like I did. This app doesn't let you round corners, but I made my own little rounded corners. I'm sure Fusion 360 people are laughing at me right now, but hey, it's only stupid if it doesn't work. And this worked for me. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. But before we do anything, I gotta make a coffee. Sometimes for these trade ads, I like to do a little recipe or something, but for this one, I'm just gonna show you simple vanilla. You use vanilla syrup in all sorts of different recipes, and it's the easiest thing in the world to make. All we're gonna do is one cup of water, boil it up, and dump one cup of sugar in there, and that's how you make simple syrup, you dummy. Put a little bit of vanilla extract in there. I use this wild vanilla powder because somebody once told me it's better for you. I don't know the difference. Bam, you have vanilla syrup. Next, you need the coffee. Oh, Bob, where do you get the coffee from? I hear you say in a really high-pitched voice. Did you forget what ad you're in? Trade makes it easy to experience all different types of new coffees. And you don't even have to leave your home. Simply tell them what you like and Trade will curate perfect coffee matches in an instant. Every coffee is roasted to order and ships to you within 48 hours so you can ensure it's the freshest beans possible. It doesn't matter how you like to enjoy your coffee. They let you pick select styles from roast level, decaf, iced, or espresso like me, among other things. Just let Trade know and they'll match you with something you'll love. My latest coffee was this from Broad Street Coffee Roasters with notes of pecan, dried fruit, and dark chocolate. Oh yeah, baby. And it arrived here on Thursday and it was roasted just this Monday. That is very fast. Give Trey to try the what? Do, Sally sells, she sees sells. This is why I had to take language classes in middle school. Give Trey a try to transform your coffee experience at home. They're offering your first bag for free with new orders. So go to drinktrade.com slash wolfden and subscribe. Trade guarantees that you'll love your first bag or they'll replace it for free. So go to drinktrade.com slash wolfden, spelled just like that to get your first bag of coffee for free. That wild powder really makes a difference. I'm just kidding, I can't taste anything. I still have COVID. Now, why would you ever want to use a controller this complicated? to play something as simple as a 2D Mario game. It's been a long time since I've preferred playing 2D Mario games or even just retro inspired games using an all button controller like this. People like to use D pads instead of joysticks because you can be more deliberate with your inputs. There's more of a separation between each direction. 
Well, with all button controllers, there's even more of a separation, allowing you to be even more deliberate with your presses. I've been playing a lot of games like this for a long time. However, if a game requires too many buttons, I usually don't like to play with a controller like this. Like for example, Metroid Dread requires a lot of buttons and that's a little too complex for me to use a controller like this. Usually if a game requires more than three or four buttons, I don't like to use a controller like this. Mario Maker, for example, only requires three face buttons. You have run, jump, and spin jump. That's it, so you can just forget these other buttons exist. When I'm at my desk, I use this controller that I made in collaboration with my friend Layership. It's a lot easier to understand and I love this, but it's still being worked on and we can't really talk about it just yet. All I have to offer you is a mailing list that's in the description that'll help show interest. And also I'll notify you whenever it's available for purchase. And I'm sure I'll be posting a video here too, so subscribe. Normally I like the WASD style layout like a PC, but the directional layout on the snack box is fine. You have left, down, right, and up. Up takes a little bit of getting used to, but luckily it's rarely used in Mario games. In Mario 1, it's only to climb the beanstalk and that's like it. I got videos on why I like to use these types of controllers and I have a video review specifically of this one controller from many years ago, if you're just interested in this part. The lamest thing about the Lenovo stand that I had the first iteration of this was that it didn't hinge and I wanted to do that. That's way cooler. Also, there was a little part of the stand in the front that cut into my wrist when I used it and that wasn't cool. I started just trying to make this one with a hinge right off of the bat and that ended up being extremely complicated and quickly seemed like it wasn't gonna work at all. On a whim, I ordered these adjustable torque hinges off of Amazon and they're kind of perfect. They're strong enough to hold the weight of the switch just fine. Incorporating those into the design was very easy to do. The old design sort of slid over the snack box on the sides. This one screws into two of the screws on the bottom of the snack box. This required slightly bigger screws, so I got this pack of M3 screws also off of Amazon, but I only use two 12 millimeter long M3 screws. So if you really wanted to, you could just get two of those from a hardware store and that's it. You don't need to get this whole pack. Just make sure that the heads can sit flush when they're screwed in. Now, the reason this only screws into two of the bottom screws is because that's more than enough and it's sitting just fine and it's not gonna fall off. But really, it's because my 3D printer is very small. So this is about the largest we could do. It physically could not take up the entire length of the Nintendo Switch or the sack box. I even had to print it on an angle just to get it to fit, but it does the job just fine. Sometimes limitations look cool. I would consider this to be an extremely easy entry-level 3D printing project if you ever wanted to get into 3D printing. All the files are in the description below, and of course, I'm walking you through what other stuff you need to put this together. I use pretty much the basic settings in my 3D printer software. I set it to quality. I like to add a brim just so it sticks to the bed easier, and I enabled supports only where the build plate is, and I changed the supports to organic because they usually work better than regular supports. And that's it. It's designed to print very easily. I usually always use Jesse's premium PLA filament from I think printedsolid.com because that was suggested to me, but I ran out, so I needed something quick. So I ordered just the highest rated one off of Amazon. And you know what? It worked really well. It's like a little soft, but it works just fine. The hinges came with screws that screw into the 3D printed parts just fine. The last little bits are the micro USB to USB-C cable. I think the newer Snackbox micros use USB-C cables. So make sure you get whatever cable works with your setup. I knew I wanted to use some sort of angled USB-C adapter. So I ended up with this weird one because it doesn't get all bunched up when the clamshell is fully open on a table. So I incorporated that into the design as well. The unit does kind of sit on the cable right here. So at the very last minute, I made a little notch in the 3D file. So the unit can be flush on a table with the cable sticking through, if you want. I'm going to use hot glue to secure it, but right now I'm just kind of letting it dangle and it's working just fine. Look at that. And the final bit here is this little rubber cabinet door stopper placed right on this corner of the face of the snack box, just so that the Joy-Con thumbsticks don't rub against the snack box when it's closed. And that, my friends, is a perfectly portable Nintendo Switch clamshell. 
This is vaguely inspired by those cyber decks that I see make the rounds every once in a while. Some of those look sick. And those also helped me feel more comfortable making it look all weird because who cares how weird it looks as long as it works. And you know what? The weirder that it looks, the more interesting it is. I also opted to leave the Joy-Con on for this design because the snack box is about as large as the Switch is with the Joy-Con on. But also, it's nice to just have the Joy-Con in case you need them. You can quickly just switch to regular portable mode without a problem. I was actually using a prototype of this the other day without the little bottom adapter thing. So the cable was all bunched up. And because of that, it like kinked in a way that disconnected the bottom part. So I had to quickly switch to the Joy-Con and that just worked. So having the Joy-Con kind of saved me there. I already have an idea of what I'd like a version two of this to look like. I do want to make one without the Joy-Con, something that would look a lot more like a laptop, which would require me to make my own controller part. I would need to redesign this whole bottom part without the snack box micro, which honestly wouldn't be too hard. I've already made controller PCBs already, but that'll take some time. I wanted something that I could use right now for Nintendo World Championship ranking. I consider myself a casual speedrunner. I like to play hard Mario Maker levels and go for some level records, but nothing like AGDQ worthy or anything. I am trying to get better at Nintendo World Championships. I have tried speedrunning the original Super Mario Bros. in the past, and this game is a great way for me to practice that. It's also pretty awesome to check out speedrun.com every once in a while and check my time against other people who've submitted their times. It's honestly been awesome. I'm gonna for sure continue to play that using this when I'm not at my desk and using that other controller when I am at my desk. Don't forget to check out the mailing list in the description below if you're interested in that other controller. I'm also gonna have Amazon affiliate links to all of the accessories that I talked about in this video if you wanna do this build yourself, plus the 3D printed files, which should be super easy to print yourself. If you don't have a 3D printer, a lot of local libraries do, but also there are websites that you can just upload the STL files and they'll print it for you. There's a uh, PCB way, JLC PCB, but I mean, I had a lot of fun making this. So maybe you'll have fun putting this together if you want to. This channel has always been about my experiences playing games and this has been one of them recently. This is my silly little way to get some Mario records. I thought I was so cool being ranked second for Mushrooms 2 until they made it a weekly challenge and all you people showed up. Anyway, what do you guys think about my stupid little Nintendo Switch clamshell that I have right here? Uh, would this be useful for anything else besides Nintendo World Championships that I've been using? Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Thank you, Trade, for sponsoring this video and keeping the coffee coming. I usually like clicky buttons for these, but I swapped them out for linear reds because they were just too loud for me to be playing in public. Hey, if you're on Long Island, I'm gonna be at Long Island Retro Gaming Expo Friday night at 7.30 p.m. at Panel Room 2. Of course, the most important thing you can do to help the channel, subscribe right here. Share this video with a friend, a friend who's gonna think that this is a really cool idea. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week.